Yes, I am so glad you actually found it. This is episode 7 of Anna's Around the World. Welcome. So in this episode 7, we'll start in Lake Baikal, uh, where we're headed towards Ulan Ul. In Ulan Ul, we had some problems with the fuel filters uh, that started to jump all over, so I had to change the filters. Luckily, I had them in my bag, and it wasn't too bad of an operation at the side of the road. Karen held the camera, I did the handiwork, and we also changed some oil. So it turns out that the KTM toolkit is really good, except for it doesn't have a nut for the drain plug changing oil. So right now I'm down a 19 millimeter, not like this, and I gotta find that. But all in all, it actually turned out to be a really good experience. We met some local bikers who helped us that night, who ended up giving us their apartment for the night, and uh, they took us around the next day to see Ulan Ud and the big Lenin statue, and especially um, into the countryside where we saw the Buddhist temple, the Buddhist center of of Russia is there. We did have a little problems with the language though. The sleep, but three. Both the slip tree. Ah, so when the Buddha's over, over green, over green. green but it's kind of amazing. Once you get used to it, it actually doesn't matter that much. Good rough. Good rough. Okay. So sometimes we just smile and then get on with it. This is a Buddhist wishing stone. It works the way you put down your coin, touch the stone three times around the house, and then you walk from down here up. And if you actually touch the stone, your wish will come through. Let's see if this actually works. <laughs> it didn't really seem like I was gonna get my wish, but what we did end up getting was a free dinner by the guys who took us to a restaurant before we said goodbye. And um, yeah, yeah, here we actually got hit by a little twister just as we were taking the photos. But we said goodbye and then we started heading east towards uh, Cheetah, just north of Cheetah however, there's a stretch of about 400 kilometers of road where there are no gas stations. And we were told that this was a place where there'd be uh, bandits also. So once we did have to stop and refuel after 400 kilometers, it was a real quick on back on the road and we started making our way towards uh, Vladivostok. But we still managed to meet people just on the road. 350cc, good guy. <laughs> Practicing my Russian here. Skolka не, ну я тоже так ездил, когда в Владивосток ездил, у меня тоже тут было это много чего. But as we kept pushing east, it got more and more desolate, and we ended up getting some food, which wasn't exactly perfect for Karen's stomach. Mine luckily didn't have any problems at all, so we took a day's rest and then kept on going east. And. We did hit bad weather <laughs> once in a while and then there's nothing to do but to, to hide. But of course I had to tease Karen with her stomach bug, which only meant that I got it the day after. So uh, this is me <laughs> with the stomach bug being real tired. So close to Vladivostok, a thousand kilometers, and then the stomach bug hits us. But we gotta make it to the 31st. 400 kilometers today. Let's see if you can make it. But luckily the food poisoning was only a 24 hour thing, so it was back on the road again. And time for some uh, Russian breakfast. This is a good one. It's actually started with a Twix this morning <laughs> in the tent. But now we got croissants with a uh, strawberry. Ooh, nice find. <laughs> and chocolate. Apple juice and the best coffee in Russia <laughs> so far. Cafe latte on a can. See, once you get a good breakfast, it uh, it's a little easier to get 
get back on the road. But we actually <laughs> met this truck too. What happened was that uh, Karen and I, we went down a little side road and we just lay on the middle of the road sleeping. And when we then woke up, this car <laughs> tried to go around us and it's all swamp area. So yeah, we're not quite sure how he was going to get up, but they didn't think it was fun when I suggested that pull him out with the KTM. Khan just disapproved that I made a hard braking here and into the side just after we started this morning. But when I put down my visor, I saw something I didn't like. It made a control escape, and I don't know. <laughs> After Khabarovsk, the road was actually pretty okay, but the last about 100 miles coming into Vladivostok was horrible. A lot of traffic, <laughs> no pavement, roadworks all over the place, and we were real tired looking forward to getting to the city now. 60 kilometers from Vladivostok. But with a little bit of luck and a lot of perseverance, we actually made it. Uh, I think it took about two months in total to do the entire trip from Denmark to Vladivostok. Hi guys! <laughs> so this is our last night in Vladivostok. And I thought we just wanted to share this nice little review from our hotel. Which is probably the best thing you can say about our hotel. It's a nice view. It almost turned out to be the easiest to get to Vladivostok. Getting out of it was a harder thing. There's one ferry that sails to South Korea and to Japan, and what you need is you need to get to locals to help you with the customs papers and everything because you can't do that on your own. That was uh, Sveta, uh, which is apparently working for Yuri. Um, she'll be helping us with customs here. Um, she just took a couple of photos of the frame number, license plate, and the motorbike, and then tomorrow we'll meet with her or Yuri to do customs and then. On the ferry. So after this I got to put the bike in the secured <laughs> customs area where I gotta be honest to say that the guys who I handed over my keys to I was uh, very very nervous about that but supposedly they do this all the time and nothing came to it but uh, they just you look very suspicious once you hand over your keys. Svita helps you get all the papers done. She'll take you around and you'll need to go to the customs office, which is out of town too. It's now Tuesday morning, 11 o'clock. We're getting the paperwork done. And after waiting about an hour, we're now at a cafe because the head of department is at lunch. And it's 11 o'clock, Tuesday morning. It's a lunch already. So, paperwork in the Russia. Be prepared to wait. So at the custom office you actually have to uh, hand in your papers that they've prepared for you and you'll be called in just to answer a few simple questions about your bike before you're let through. And that's it. <laughs> Karen and I, we've done all the way from Denmark to Vladivostok and it was about 16,000 kilometers in total. If you've seen episode 5, you know why I'm uh, walking around the manhole the way I am. But when you get through all of it, this is what you get to see. A really, really nice ferry that has all everything you need. And people are nice, courteous, they smile and they even have the boss, Mr. OK Man. I mean, this sounds like a strange thing, but once you haven't seen toilets or nice toilets for a long time, then when you come to places like this, this is like paradise. It's quite a big difference coming from Russia now. This is the bathroom, which is pretty much the best bathroom I've seen in most of Eastern Russia. And here, yeah. should pull aside. Sure. There's a little sauna and some very weird looking mirrors here. So, very excited. We got out of Russia. And now, South Korea. Finally leaving. <laughs> and enjoy. Uh, the ferry was delayed about four hours, that's why we're saying finally. The Russians were incredibly hospitable, but once we got to South Korea, we got really excited about all the next things we had to see.
So that's it. We leave you here with our burgers and beers and leave Bloody Vostok behind. Those of you who haven't seen the rest of my episodes, make sure you go to honestaroundtheworld.com and check out my other videos there or on my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash honestaroundtheworld. For those of you who've got ideas or suggestions, make sure you go to my Facebook page, facebook.com slash honestaroundtheworld, and uh, you can leave, my, leave me messages there or you can even see where I am right now and what I'm doing. I make a ton of small little updates and here in the end, you'll just see how good it feels to get Korean food once you've been eating Russian for so long. Anna's enjoying his non-Russian meal. Remember guys to share if you care and next episode I'll see you in South Korea.